Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Baha Shum, Racha Hakwadash, double honor to our elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone, peace and blessed to the elect. Psalms chapter 34, verse 15. The eyes of Yahweh, Baha Shum, Yahweh Shai, are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. All of your enemies will be ashamed. All the people that have come up against you throughout the years are going to be ashamed. And I'm going to entitle this. They should have left you alone. They referring to your enemies. Your adversaries. Those that come up against you, they should have left you alone. All right. Psalms chapter 34, verse 15. The eyes of the Lord, which are the angels. The Alahayim, the holy angels, the powers. OK. The angels on the right hand side. The eyes of Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai are upon the righteous, which are the elect of Israel. The righteous are the elect of our people. And his ears are open unto their cry, which means the angels are here to receive our prayers. Our cries are our prayers. Okay? Our prayers are. Our requests, what we desire, okay? They take our cries or our prayers before Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai discusses what's going on with us to his heavenly father, Yahweh. That's how it works. But everyone that has come up against you throughout the years, they're going to be hurt. They're going to be hurt bad, man. Okay? They should have left you alone. And what inspired this, we know, which, which is all through the spirit. Okay? What inspired this, you know, I was driving and, um, you know, I had stopped for a minute. You know, I had parked the car. You know, but I was meditating. I started thinking about how very soon the Lord is going to start answering these curses that brothers have been putting on people. You know, because a lot of people come up against us, man. We have a lot of enemies. You know, but, you know, I was in the car. I parked the car, but I started meditating for a minute that the Lord is going to start answering our prayers and the Lord is going to start acting on the curses that we've been putting on people. And the moment I thought that and said that to myself, immediately an ambulance had drove by and it was quick. Immediately. Like, like man, ah, shit. Like, you know, like it, it was so damn fast, you know, with the uh, with the sirens and, you know, of course, the lights. Right when I'm thinking this to myself, it, it was a. Uh, it, it wasn't a comical moment, you know. It, it was a sobering moment because it wasn't nothing to laugh about. Like, like shit, like, you know, you put some curses up on people and the Lord act on it. It, it is quick. You know, it, it's, it's scary, you know? And that's why when we do it, we're, we're more careful. Okay. Because this thing is deadly serious. You know, when you shalak right on people, you better damn mean it, you know? You better mean it. You know, because you put that out there. You you putting that vibration out there for harm to come to someone because they did wickedness to you. All right. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. With praying evil on individuals that do you wrong because we cannot physically, you know, put hands on people. 
And we don't intend to do that, all right? But the Lord can do far more than we can. So somebody doing wrong to us and we did nothing wrong to those people, us, you know, putting up prayers to the Heavenly Father to give us justice and, and to get that person right, so to speak. You know, the Lord make them get their mind right for messing with us. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. The men of the Lord have done it many times. Okay? I'll get an example with the beloved Apostle Paul. Because there were men that troubled him. And you better believe the Lord troubled their ass for messing with the Apostle Paul. Because the Lord loves Paul. You know? This is 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. And Apostle Paul is one of the elect, okay? 2 Timothy 4 and 14. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. He, he put a curse on Alexander. You know? I mean, come on now. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. He did me wrong. The Lord reward him according to his works, meaning the Lord make it fair. The Lord balance it out. The Lord bring evil on that guy for doing evil to me. You know, of whom be thou where also, for he have greatly withstood our words. So he was warning men of the Lord, hey, beware this guy. You know, look out for him. Hey, that's why I'm going to say mark those that cause division. Okay? So, you know, this is the beloved Apostle Paul warning Timothy, you know, putting Timothy up on game concerning this man, Alexander. This is a wicked individual who's not going to receive the truth, okay? For he have greatly withstood our words. And you have a lot of men out here like that. We call them scoffers and scorners, you know? But yeah, um, that's it, man. And all this is good. You know, the Lord was with the beloved Apostle Paul. The Lord delivered Paul out of a lot of hell, man. Okay, but that's all I'm going to get on that. And uh, I'm going to get something else. Let's go to the blue letter. Because you have a lot of people that have come up against us, man. All right. And evil will come upon those people. All right. This is first Timothy one and 20. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander. Oh, they, they go his name again. Whom I have delivered unto Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme, meaning he put curses on them. Because when you pray evil on somebody, you're delivering them unto Satan. You praying to your how about Shemiah was shy to send Satan on those individuals. Okay? Because they do you hurt. They do you wrong. And they act as if no one saw them do that shit. You know, people move around on the earth with no fear, man. But yet, you know, I'm going to get ready to close it out. The main point is that People are going to learn for, um, you know, messing with you. They're going to learn they lesson, man. All right. Because the Lord is dealing with certain men on the earth. His messengers, his servants, the prophets, and people are going to learn the prophets ain't to be toyed with, man. All right. The Lord going to jack a lot of people up. And I believe through the spirit. There was a sign today, you know. I mean, we don't always go into signs, but the Lord will give certain tokens. He'll show you things in the spirit that, yeah, he going to make that good. What we've been asking for. OK. Our, our different requests. You see. Yeah, I kid you not. When I was thinking that the Lord going to start acting on these curses that we put on our enemies, 
immediately an ambulance drove by. And and and, and it was it, it was just flying, man. Okay. It was flying as if somebody is about to die or, or, or they, you know, um, or they're in critical condition. That's how fast the ambulance was driving. Whoever was driving the ambulance, you know, that's how fast it was flying. Point being, people should have left you alone, man. All right. I pray this is edifying. I'll get one more because a lot of evil are going to come upon our people. For how they came at the prophets, man. Throughout their generations. I'm in the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Chapter 18. And. and you, you see why niggas just got to go, man. All right. I'm going to read this, man. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 18. Then said they come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah. So our people's plotting on. You know, taking Jeremiah out. All right. If it wasn't them grabbing him up, they wanted to catch him up in his words. They wanted to do different things to confound Jeremiah. And if they couldn't do it with words, they wanted to put him to death. For the law should not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come and let us smite him with the tongue. And let us not give heed to any of his words. But they didn't realize the Lord was there. You know, while they was, you know, plotting and, and you know, seeking to figure out how they was going to catch him up in his words and confound him. Listen to this right here. Give heed to me. Oh, Yahweh. Jeremiah saw what our people was doing. So now he's praying to the Lord. Give heed to me. Oh, Yahweh. And hearken to the voice of them. That contend with me. So you you hear what they saying, Lord. You hear how they want to get me. Shall evil be recompensed for good? Yeah, so they, they going to reward me evil. And now I did will show them good. For they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them. Lord, I'm pleading to you not to kill them. I've been doing that. And to turn away your wrath from them. But Israel wicked, man. So Jeremiah saw the wickedness of Israel. He's crying to the Lord about it. And Jeremiah came to the conclusion that the majority of our people just got to die. He put curses on them. Verse 21. Therefore, deliver up their children to the famine and pour out their blood by the force of the sword. And that's going to happen in this lifetime. This prayer, which is a curse. Because he's praying evil on two thirds of our people and the rebels around the earth. He praying evil on them. This prayer and curse is going to be answered in our lifetime. In the form of our people dying in the famine. All throughout the earth, especially America. OK, them dying during martial law, them being locked up in concentration camps. OK. Them being eaten alive, you know, cannibalized. You know, women being ravished by foreign troops. This is all coming to our people for their wickedness, man. Let their wives be bereaved of their children. Yeah, families being separated. Your sons and daughters being put to death. So the Lord is going to answer us, okay? Everything that we've been, you know, asking for. You know, which really is all just. We've, we've been crying out for justice. Okay? The Lord is going to answer us, man. It's already done. Okay? And let the wives be bereaved of their children, of their sons, and be widows. Yeah, so it's going to be a lot of single ladies out here because the Lord is going to put the husband or, or you know, the, the man to death, the man in the house, he's going to be put to death. And your sons and daughters going to be put to death. You have a lot of women that have come up against the prophets. The Lord going to do different things to you women. And to your families. And let their men be put to death. See that? So you're going to be out there alone, you women. 
Let their young men be slain by the sword in battle. During martial law, during race riots, dur during the third woe, World War III. Let a cry be heard from their houses when thou shalt bring a troop suddenly upon them. Martial law. For they have digged a pit to take me. And he has snares for my feet. They want to trap me. They want to kill me. Yet, Lord, Yahweh, thou knowest all their counsel against me to slay me. Forget not their iniquity. So remember this, Lord. Remember this. So it's certain people on the earth that are marked for death. That have come up against the prophets. Neither blot out their sin from thy sight. Make them pay for it. Give them a horrible, slow death. Torture them slowly. Neither blot out their sin from thy sight. So certain people are not going to be forgiven for their sin until they die. Okay? That applies to certain Israelites. So prayers are going to be answered, man. Curses, which are, you know, prayers when you pray evil on people. Those are going to be answered as well. Okay? But let them be overthrown before thee. So don't save them, Lord. Don't beam them up in the, into the chariots, but destroy them. A hey, scripture in the Psalms that says how King David saw his desire upon his enemies. That's also going to happen for the house of David. Everybody that's come up against y'all, you don't see things happen to them, man. And it's going to be to the point to where some of these judgments are going to be so horrific, you can damn near feel bad, you know, because you're in the flesh. But then you remember, like, nah, they, they paying for what they did. Okay, that's the Lord getting them because the Lord didn't forget about what they did. But let them be overthrown before thee. Deal thus with them in the time of thine anger. And Jacob's trouble, that's the time of the Lord's anger. That's a specific time when the Lord is angry with the earth. Okay, and he's especially angry with you Israelites, man. I pray this is edifying. Barakatha Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash, double honor to elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone. Peace and blessed to the elect. The Lord gonna get y'all enemies, man. Okay? These Edomites, these heathens, these, you know, the other nations and these two thirds, man. The Lord gonna get these people, man, for coming up against you. Shalom.